Hi, welcome to another edition of Antique Radio Archaeology. Today I'm going to be playing around with a device known as a loose coupler. Now if you know anything about uh, old radio, uh, back in the teens, early 20s, loose couplers were actually uh, quite prolific. Now uh, this particular one here uh, probably is dated uh, around 1920, uh, could be 1919, I'm not sure. Um, but these things were produced up into the early 20s. And uh, while you don't see them a lot in the radio world, one of the main reasons were uh, because these things were typically used for wireless communications reception of Morse code instead of broadcast radio. But it doesn't mean it can't receive broadcast radio, just uh, that's what they was uh, pr primarily used for back in the, uh, the late teens, early 20s. Now, uh, this particular loose coupler is rated at between 200 meters and 4,000 meters, and if you know anything about RF uh, conversion, you know that that's about 75 kilohertz up to about 1,500 kilohertz. So, uh, as far as broadcast band, it's going to be the lower end of the broadcast band that it can receive on. So, you have to keep that in mind when you're playing around with one of these. Now, a loose coupler itself is not a radio. It's just simply an RF tuner. Uh, and if you know anything about radio, you know that you need to have uh, a frequency determining device, which is an RF tuner. Uh, you need to have a detector and you need to have some means of reproduction, such as a set of headphones. Now, without those items, this thing is just basically a boat anchor. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put together enough components to make a radio with this. And we're going to start with a set of headphones for my reproduction. I have a crystal detector. And that's what I basically need. However, uh, usually these things were configured in a way that you would also use a variable condenser uh, to create a, a tank circuit at the uh, input, which helped give you better selectivity. And you also added a fixed condenser uh, at the headphones in order to filter out uh, the extraneous RF. So let's go ahead and take a look at how I'm going to configure this. And here is a diagram that shows you and also I'm going to show you here the schematic for how this thing's going to be hooked up. So as you can see it's a simple crystal radio and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to show you a little bit about the uh, loose coupler and then we're going to go ahead and hook all this stuff up and see if we can't get something out of it. So this is a loose coupler and as you can see it's very large uh, which is a definite disadvantage when you're trying to recreate a radio. Um, it has a fixed coil here with a slider on it. It has a movable coil here which slides on these rails. And on the front of the movable coil, I have 10 taps that allow me to narrow down the frequency even more. So those are the basics of a loose coupler. Uh, I have my hookups back here. Uh, these two here are the hookups for the loose coil. And these down here are the hookups for the fixed coil. So as you can see, I have several items that I'm going to hook up here. And I'm going to start with uh, a variable uh, capacitor made by the Chelsea Radio Company. This one's rated at 0 .0011 uh, microfarads. And it's uh, got a vernier on it, so it gives me a little bit more uh, selectivity. Uh, I've got a crystal detector here with a cat whisker. I've got my fixed condenser, which this one's made by the Murdoch Corporation. And then I have a set of chief uh, headphones here that I'm going to use to uh, receive the signal. Now for the sake of demonstration, uh, once I do get it hooked up and working, I am going to hook up a powered speaker so that you can hear uh, what I'm hearing in the headphones. So uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to get this thing hooked up and then let's uh, see what we can get. Okay, so using a diagram that I found online, I was able to go ahead and hook everything up as per the diagram and I also uh, went ahead and created a schematic for this to show you how uh, it would look uh, schematically. So let's go ahead and take a look at what I've done here. I've connected the condenser to this coil here. I've connected the other condenser basically in parallel with this condenser and the detector. Detector is in series going over back over to the condenser here. And uh, so I've got everything hooked up the way it should be. I should be able to hear something if I start tuning.
Okay, I've got something. So that's it. What we've done is we've created a radio external to all this circuitry here. We've got an antenna tuner here. You've got a uh, fine tuning capacitor here. You've got a RF bypass capacitor here. We've got our detector. And of course our output device, which in this case we're using the uh, powered speaker. So that's it. Very simple, very short and sweet. I hope uh, you enjoyed today's video and hope to see you again next video. Happy restorations everybody.